How does it feel looking back, Henny? Well, I don't know. I just go about my business. I must say, I don't want to say anything about me, really, but I'm very popular and I'm always out. Yeah, of course. This is, for me, is something new to be stuck in the house for two months because I'm usually out all the time. I go to a day, two day centers, the Holocaust Survivor Center and the AJR Association of Jewish Refugees. So then I have my friends, so I'm always out. But now I've been stuck in for two. Mind you, the telephone is good. I yeah. always describe, Henny, the people like you who lived through World War II and you fought for our country in the most incredible circumstances. You are the greatest generation. And to see you not being able to leave the house just feels so unfair. First, for training, I went to Newcastle. And after Newcastle, I went, oh, that was fantastic. I went to Westcliff on sea. <laughs> I was there a while. And then I was transferred to a very big army camp in outside Nottingham, Chilwell. And there I was most of the time. Wow. And, and I, I drove a truck. Yes. But only, uh, only on the premises, like in the camp. It was very large. Chilwell, it was called. Yes. And it was ordinance. I was in the ordinance corps. And there we had this big where all the weapons were stocked. And when they came in, we had to take them all over the place, in special places, whatever there was, they were in special places. We never knew what was in the boxes or whatever it was, but it was an important job. Absolutely. And I got well with everybody. Of course you did, because you're amazing. And, and, and Henny, do you remember where you were on VE Day? Oh, yes, I do very well. I also had, I, well, in the house that I lived, I had no parents, no. but the house I lived was a relative, and so her children were all born in this country, and she had one daughter, same age as me. Uh, she was in the West. She was Air Force. So the two of us went all down to Oxford Street because we didn't live very far from there. I lived in the West End. And we went down Oxford Street with all the crowds. Amazing. And what was it like? What was the feeling like? Well, it was happy, especially for me. But for me especially because I had no parents and I didn't know what happened to them. So um, my mother... Well, you know my story about my mother, about my father went to a concentration camp. I found that out very, very late. I never knew what happened to him, nor did my mother. My mother never found out at all. She died before I found out that he went to Sobibor. And that upset me very much. Of course and it does. I think about it every day. Of course you do. That that you were reunited with your mother after the war. Yes, yes. Tell me about that. Well, my mother knew where we were. My mother was one of those people that climbed over the mountains. Yes. She climbed from Italy. My, my parents were from country to country, they ran, and they ended up in the south of France. So I must say I'm not very fond of the French. <laughs> No. Because they collected 76,000 Jews and sent them to their death, including my father. So after my father was taken away, my mother went to Italy with other people on the borders of Switzerland. And she climbed over the mountains into Switzerland. And behind her, the Nazis were shooting the people. But she made it. She was young. And, um, and then she knew where we were, and she, felt, she um, wrote a letter, but that was quite a long time after. And my mother managed to come to England as a domestic, 1947. Wow. So how many, and I was 15 when I left. I had a sister, 12. She went potato picking from the school. <laughs> she was evacuated, and I had a brother, 14, who also did war work. 
And so two years after VE Day, you were reunited with your mum in England. Yes. But my, unfortunately, my mother died young as well. She was 67. Gosh. And she died. And what was so incredible, Henny, so incredible, is that you leave Germany on this scheme called the Kinder Transport Scheme. And that was a scheme that allowed young Jewish teenagers at yes, risk okay, of... Yes, on the Kinder Transport. Yeah. Yes. Because I had family here. Yes. At the original, my family, they came as young couples from Poland just after the First World War, and all their children were born here. So as they all went in the army and whatnot, I didn't know any difference. So when I was called up and had to do war work, what can I do? Like my cousins, I went in the army, and that's how I got in the army. And you were just 15 years old when you left Germany? 15? I, I go back to Germany now every year. Yeah. for the last seven years, and talked to schools. Amazing. And what I didn't know, that I only found out yesterday from my grandson, that I'm on the computer, on Google. Amazing. In the, in the last, the, since, 19, since I was 92, to the same school, I've got a, a story on there. I only found out yesterday. I was shocked when I saw myself on the computer. But Henny, you're a hero. You are a hero. <laughs> I don't know about that. But I, I enjoyed being in the army because I'm a person who can get on with people. Yes. And, and Henny, do you remember what the people were like in the UK when you first arrived from Germany? Uh, well, I, like I say, I had quite a large family here, so... Oh, I do remember one thing. I started work when I could speak English, which wasn't very long. So I was just 16 years old, and um, I went to work. I come from families that everybody went to work. And um, they, found me, they found me a job in a factory sewing on buttons. And there was a young girl, same age as me, an English girl, Christian girl, so we became friends, and it was near Christmas time. And she invited me, these Christian people invited me to their home. It was quite a long way away. And they treated me so nice, and i never forget it. Mm -hmm. And that I was only 16. They, they bought me Christmas present. It, it was just wonderful. I've never forgotten them. So when you left Germany and you were 15 years old, what did you know about Hitler and his persecution of the Jewish people. Did you know it was going on? Oh, yes. I was also there Kristallnacht, but as was in the day. It wasn't night. It wasn't night. It was daytime. And I remember it like yesterday. But I must say, I come from Cologne. And it wasn't quite so bad there. And I tell that to children when I go back there to talk. Seven years now I'm going back. And um, they, my, I had a grandfather, I had a wonderful grandfather who went to Auschwitz, and he, he the, pol the police there took him, but to save him. He and survived? It was all over, but my, where I lived with my family, we were hiding on the roof. While downstairs they were knocking the glass out. That never goes out of my memory. And I had nightmares when I came. I had nightmares for years and years that I'm, somebody wants to get into the house and I'm holding the door. That is in, I'm, I didn't know why I had this dream for many years that I'm holding the front door because somebody wants to get in to hurt us. But I didn't know why I dreamt that. And, but I dreamt it for many, many years, and it just drove me up the wall. And then I have a son who is a, hypno, a medical, he won't make fun of people, but he is a clinical hypnotherapist. Mm. And my son is nearly 60 now, and he still does the same work. 
So I told him about my dream that I couldn't stand it anymore. So he hypnotized me and asked me questions. And it turned out that it was from Crystal Night wow. that I dreamt that dream. And I never wow. had to dream again. What happened to your grandfather? Pardon? What happened to your grandfather? Oh, my grandfather. They were hidden in Belgium, my grandfather. And he, my grandmother, my, my first wife of my grandfather, she died. She was 48. Well, that's a long time ago. And he still had two young children. So he married again a youngish woman. And he had more children with her. They all went to concentration camp. The kid children, they were the same age as me, about 13 and 14. There was two of them. They went to concentration camp. <laughs> and then one was still, one was still about two, two years old or three years old. And he went to a kindergarten in Belgium. So in the meantime, they took his parents away. They both died in, I think, the step-grandmother. She died in Belson just after the war. They gave her too much to eat. Mm. When the, when the, um, I think it was the Americans came oh, in no. Belgium. Oh. So she died. So she left this young boy. And um, he was brought up by his older stepbrother in Belgium. And he still is now in his 70s, and he still lives, he's the only one left, and he still lives in Belgium, but I don't see him very much. But I heard from him not long ago, and I got a picture of him on my computer. How lovely, how lovely. Henny, oh, yeah. Henny, what... But I don't know him very well. Henny, what do you think young people today need to know about what happened yes, during the, World War Two. The young people today, like I say, seven years running, like for every year I go to different schools and I've got loads of pictures. They all want the girls, they all want their picture taken with me and the young people are fantastic and they cannot imagine how their grandparents did such a thing. I know. They, they treat me like the queen. And what do you think the world learned from World War II? I'm afraid the world learned nothing at all. <laughs> I myself, maybe, you know, I, I'm, like I say, I've always been out and I go on the bus. I haven't got a car, so I'm always on the buses. I know London very well because <laughs> I lived in the West End when I came to England. And I meet a lot of people at the bus, English people. I have no problem whatsoever. If I can, if I can, I tell them I'm Jewish because they should know that we, we're not the bad people, like they say. And we're very good people, it so happens. We give a lot of charity money. We do. Jewish Care is the biggest one. Also gives money to English English charities, and I, I have no problem at all. All people at the bus stop, well, I'm always at the bus stop or even the tube to the last minute, and they're all very nice to me, very nice. I have no problems whatsoever. Do you worry that Jewish people are still persecuted today? Yes, it does worry me. It does worry me. Because we're not bad people. No, of course not. I tell you what once happened to me on the on the bus. This is just a few years ago. I was on the bus and the bus was full up, and a mother said to a young child had, had was sitting on the, on the seat by herself with her mother. So the mother told her to get up and let me sit down. So I said to her, I said to the little girl, "Thank you very much for letting me sit down." So the mother said to me, are you Jewish? I said, yes. She says, I thought so because you're a nice person. And that I will also never forget. Beautiful, beautiful. He, uh, uh, Henny, do you, f do, do you feel German or do you feel British? No, I feel English. I feel English. Do you know, when I, went, when I was um, uh, 
uh, when I first went in the army and I was stationed in Westcliff on sea and we marched through the streets, I felt more English than the English. <laughs> I loved it. I even had, I saw myself on, <laughs> on an old photograph and I've got the English flag approach on my tie wow. when I was in the army. I love being English. I still do. Everything you have lived through, Hedy, makes you an inspiration because you had to go through so much, so young. I I do everything that's necessary, and I have to, I'm very well from seventeen. So nine, you know, when I go to Germany, I get to get it upside. I still speak German. Yes, and. Um, and uh, sometimes, you know, it's upside down, the numbers. 96 is 69. <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes get that mixed up. So instead of being 97, I was 96. The last time I was there was last November. And um, so instead of 96, I was 69. <laughs> <laughs> and Henny, how do you plan to mark VE Day tomorrow? Oh, I shall watch the television. I'm not going out. I've got a wonderful grandson, my oldest one. I've got three grandsons. They're men. They're not boys. Well, you can imagine my age. And my husband, my husband was English-born. I've also Polish parents, but he was born. He was an identical twin. Wow. And um, he was in the army as well, and his twin. And his parents had four boys. Four or five, I can't remember now. I think they had six children. Oh, yes, four boys. And everyone was in the army, the four boys. And they lived in the east end of London, and they were bombed out twice. What is your... If you... Henny, if you had a message to young people today who maybe don't know about World War Two, what message do you have to them? Well... It makes no difference to the color of your skin. We're all human. And if they're nice to you, you'll be nice to them. I tell you, I don't want to blow my own, ho my own horn. But people, I meet people, like I say, every day. And I must say, people say to me, and I always say, I meet such nice people every day. And they say to me, because you're nice, we are nice. Yeah. And I have no anti-Semitism, to be quite honest. I've never known anti-Semitism ever. In the UK? I get on with people, and I don't care what colour they are. They may be green, yellow, anything. I don't care. Do you, do you speak to anyone else who lived through the war now? Well, what else could I do? I didn't know about what happened to my parents then. I didn't know. I just hoped that I was going to see them again. But unfortunately, I never did see my father again or grandfathers. No. A lot of my people, a lot of my family went to camps and also children. It's hard. I've got a picture of um, when I was 10. That's, that's a, a, a three, four, but five of us. And to ten, I was the oldest, I'm the tallest one. And um, and there was three of, two of the grandchildren, um, two, no, two of the young children, two or three children on the photograph. They were young, young, they were children, young, younger than me. And, <clears throat> and they all went to a concentration camp. Then there was my brother, my sister. My sister was only about, so she must have been about six or seven. We on this picture, just the, the children. And, um, and, and, you know, people see that picture because in Germany, we, um, there, is a, there was a Jewish school, and um, they, they made like... Um, they made like a museum out of it, and it's got all the pictures. I supplied some of it, a lot of pictures, my school pictures. I went to a Jewish school in Cologne, and most of them went to concentration camps. God. So, 
I have been the lucky one. I yeah. was lucky with the people that was the cousin of my father. And like I say, she had four, and they all went in the army because they were born here. Um, and one of the girls went in the world. And I must say, they treated me very, very well. I, they're all dead, the whole family, except the next generation, like my children. Yes. And um, like my children. And I see them, some of them, I see them sometimes, not very often. Well, but we're still on on the computer talking to each other. Well, Henny Franks from from my generation, and I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you for what you did during World War Two. Uh, thank you a, for joining the honor, army. It's an honor to talk to you and for people to know that we Jewish people were in the army and yeah. did fight back. As a matter of fact. That when I first was called up and went to Newcastle, the whole there was about thirty or forty of us, and we were all Jewish young children, all Holocaust survivors. Wow. And then after the training, we went to different places. So you were in Newcastle. Pardon? You were in Newcastle. A training, Newcastle. Oh, oh wow! And. Um, and some other Jewish people used to invite us to dinner. And uh, was quite happy. It was just for training. After training, yeah. we all got posted somewhere else. Yeah. And, Henny, what about the Queen? The Queen is giving a speech tomorrow uh, that her father read on VE Day. Do you remember that speech? Oh, I will listen. I no, Prince Charles. Quite, I met Prince Charles about three, four times, Amazing. and he also invited us. He, he's always well; he's the patron of something Jewish, something, and he invites us to his home, which I have been invited. I've got a picture, and um, and he was very nice. He, he spoke to me a little bit longer because I had a picture of me. He sat on, well, there were 15 tables, and he sat on every table and shook hands with everyone, 150 of us. Wow. And I like him very much. I listened to him, what he explained himself not long ago on the television. And anyway, he, he shook hands with 150 people. And on my table, I was, I was table number 15, so he had it was 10 on each table. So he had a little bit more time, and I showed him my picture in uniform, and he looked at it, and he said, well done. And I said, yes, I was done the same. I was in the same army as your mother. <laughs> yes, the ATS. Thank you so much for oh, talking to me you, today. Thank you for listening to me. And the English people, are, I got, I've been abroad a lot. I, got, I love go traveling. But the English people are the nicest people. Um, I don't know if I should say this, but I will never, there's some things I'll never forget. I was with my son. He was a young boy, was maybe about 10 or 11. I took him to France on a holiday. And I, got, I took him around Paris. I, I'm a sightseer. I love yes. sightseeing. And I took him around Paris, and the two of us got lost. So I had him written down the hotel we were staying, and we were in a group. No, I wasn't on my own. And I showed it to a, a French woman in Paris and asked her in my best French, <laughs> which wasn't very much, where that was that I got lost. She shrugged her shoulder, made a long face, and off she went. And that was a lesson for life for me. If anybody... I'm a Londoner, and if any foreign person asks me where to go, I, I go out of my way to help them. That was a lesson for life for me. Totally. You are an amazing woman. You're an incredible woman, Henny Franks. Thank you for everything you did for this country, coming from Germany as a persecuted Jewish young child and then joining our army. 
to go and fight the war effort and beat Hitler. It was just an incredible, incredible thing that you did. Well, I felt, you know, when I was in the army, they wanted to send me to Germany because I could speak German. But then oh. I was only 15 and I had enough. Yeah. And I refused. I refused. I said, no way. I'm not going back there. I'm glad I'm out. But they said, you're in the army. You go where you, have, where you get sent. And I said, yes, that's different. If they send me, then I will go. But volunteering, never. But I must say also something that um, uh, just when the war, my mother was in, the, in Switzerland. So when the war was over, one day she went back to Belgium because she had two two brothers there. She had two brothers in Belgium. So she went back to Belgium and wrote to me straight away. And I was still in the army. And, um, and I asked the army whether I could go and spend my leave at that time in Belgium to see my mother. And they said yes. Oh. So I went, traveled with the troops to Brussels, that's where my mother was. And I said, so here comes the British soldier. <laughs> and, I, and I told my mother for the first time, my 10 days leave, and also my brother, I had two brothers there. And so after 10 days, I had to go back. But they did let me go and see my mother for the first time I arrived as a British soldier. <laughs> that is beautiful. That was fantastic. What a story. These are the nice things that I always remember. Henny Franks, thank you. You're an incredible woman. Have a very special, I know it's going to be hard because you're on your own inside, but have a special VE day. We all salute you for what you did. Thank you so much for for talking to us today. Oh, thank here. Thank you. Thank you, everyone who's listening to me. Thank you for doing this for me. I was very happy to do it. You're an amazing because woman. Because I love Britain. I love it. And that's it. <laughs> well, we love you. Thank yeah, you, Henny. I feel completed. Like I say, I felt more British than the Brits. Thank you so much. So, Have an amazing day tomorrow. Yes, yes, it will be. Take me back.